much for being here. Special thanks to Virginia and the other members of the Puppet Iowa for putting this on. I don't think anyone believed me that we had this many people in one house that don't live in my district. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, so my name is Jody Clemens, and like Bob said, I am from Springdale, Iowa, which we now have signs on the interstate, so All right. you can see us as we go by. We're kind of a big deal. Um, <laughs> and I am running for House District 73 because I want to get money out of politics so that we can get back to putting people and the planet above party and profit. All right. Yeah. Mark Twain, which is Samuel Clemens, for those of you that know, no, no relation, but we also feel like a big deal when we're down in, in uh, Hannibal, Missouri. Uh, he said that the two most important days of your life are the day that you're born and the day that you realize why. And so I'm here to talk to you today about purpose, about why I'm here, about why all of you are hopefully here, and, uh, and how we can can accomplish things together. So um, my story starts off um, as a 17 year old girl as a senior in high school with a positive pregnancy test. So not the way that uh, you want to start off your the rest of your life. Um, and you know, and I was faced with a choice at that point. And because of my awesomely supportive family, and my boyfriend at the time who stuck around, we are almost at 19 years here in a couple months. Um, I was able to make that decision knowing that I would have the support to um, to raise my daughter and uh, you know and and so many others don't have that support and so that is you know just starting off part of my story as to why I why I support pro-choice um, so I take a slightly different approach to motherhood than a, than a lot of people do my husband and I we don't measure um, success we don't we don't hope that our kids are successful so much as we want them to be kind and generous. So we focus a lot on that, that uh, you know, they need to find their own purpose and their own passion in life and, and hope that we're leading by examples in doing that. And so my kids and I, we volunteer a lot together. Uh, my daughter and I teach vacation Bible school and we have like 20 toddlers at a time, um, which I think will prepare me very well for the state. <laughs> <laughs> I was a waitress. I think that any person should have to wait tables at least once in their life so they understand here, here. what that's like. I still have nightmares. <laughs> um, I've worked retail. I managed a truck stop through most of my 20s. So for those people that accuse me of being too nice, I got this. <laughs> I know how to handle people as well. Um, I spent about eight years working for Mercy Hospital in the uh, insurance side of things and I helped negotiate fee schedules between the hospitals and the doctors and that really opened up my eyes as to what our insurance system was like. And I knew that if we were negotiating rates down at a certain level, that somebody without insurance was making up the difference. Um, I saw that broken system back then, and I felt completely helpless to be able to change any part about that. Um, and so I didn't feel like I was helping anyone in that job. And simultaneously, I was teaching financial literacy classes at my uh, local church and helping people navigate the broken financial system. And there I found a need to apply my passion, which gave me a new purpose. And so I left Mercy Hospital and I became a financial advisor because when I would get my clients or the people that are taking my class to a certain point, I was trying to find somebody to send them to with the heart of a teacher that would listen to what they wanted. And I just kept coming up empty handed. So I thought, okay, I will go do that. So um, I became a financial advisor and I worked for a not-for-profit financial company. Um, they make fun of me and call me the nonprofit of the not-for-profit because I help more people that are probably never invest a dollar with me than, than um, searching out wealthier clients. So, but that's my passion. Money has never motivated me. People motivate me. So um, I've been doing that for about four years now. And uh, so sometime in between Mercy and, and taking the leap into being a financial advisor, I also um, delivered twins. I decided my kids where I was done having children of my own, and so I helped out another family. And uh, so my best friend Mike and his husband, I had twins for them in 2004. And the reason that's relevant is because um, when you hit that level of peak generosity, it's like, <laughs> what do you do next? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's no ladder to climb at that point. And I think I had a really hard time after that. Like, how do I help more people? You know, and so I became a super volunteer, much to my husband's dismay. Um, I I have an antique store in West Branch with my sisters, and I'm on the community development group there in town. 
um, really took an interest in small town politics, in uh, developing community, and recognizing the rural issues that, that small towns like mine, and especially over farther into Cedar County face. And, um, and so that was another niche that I picked up and made that my purpose. And uh, I'm very active in our school. I helped twice to try to get our school bond passed over in West Branch and learned so much about personality politics in the process. So we're going to get it next time because we've, I think we finally have figured out messages that are going to work. <laughs> um, so that led me to um, just realizing that I had worked for two broken systems and coming out of 2016, getting so much more involved in politics, I realized that that was the most broken system of all. In fact, that our political system isn't just broken, it's fixed. And that I recognize that money in politics is the number one reason why we can't get anything else accomplished. Because we have two sides that we can't even see fighting issues that we care about that keep putting us versus them every step of the way. So um, getting money out of politics is my number one issue that I want to work on. Recognizing that for us to make progress on anything else, we have to start there. And that is a bipartisan issue that I'm having a lot of good luck talking to independents and even Republicans in my district, gaining support. Will you help us on this project? We can go back to fighting later about all those other issues, but this is super important that we need to start today and, and accomplish that. And so one of the ways that I'm doing that is leading by example. So I am not taking um, any PAC money. I am relying on donations from people like you to, to fund this campaign. And we've been doing awesome so far. And you guys are going to totally blow us away tonight. I am so honored to have all of you here um, proving a blueprint that we can win elections without taking money from big influences. Because I don't want anybody to ever question the votes that I make and who paid for them in the process. So. election of 2016, um, 2017 rolled around, and I'm sure like so many of you, I just needed to do something. And I just started talking to other people, and everybody had this thirst, like how do we get involved, how do we make a difference? And so um, me and a couple other people in West Branch, we started an Indivisible Iowa chapter over there. And our first meeting, we had the room packed. Now, Selena was there for that first meeting, and it was amazing. We had all different, you know, people from different walks of life, sharing their stories about what had brought them there that day. And it was, you know, I think my favorite was there was a woman that was brand new to politics and she, she said it perfectly. She says, I'm here to just learn how to not do nothing anymore. And I think that could almost describe the last year that we had of so many new faces coming into the process. Um, a lot of my volunteers, this is the first campaign they've ever worked on. Um, first time they've attended a political event. First time they've donated to a, to a candidate. So we're very proud of of our outreach we're doing as well in getting some civic engagement going because I think that right there is the number one way that we're going to, to win back the House and the Senate and Congress and get things moving in the right direction again is that every one of us has to take a personal stance in this and, and get involved, talk to people, get them involved, um, and on down the line. So with Indivisible Iowa, our first meeting, we decided that one of our main um, objectives of our group was finding somebody to run against Bobby Kaufman. Um, <laughs> he had run unopposed in the previous election and we were watching everything go through the state house last year that was just devastating coming out of Des Moines and so I volunteered to start following him around. I went to his forums and the more I interacted with him the more I knew that that person was going to be me. So, um, so I, you know, I took my, my passion of fixing the things they were, and I found the need, and so now I have a new purpose, and that purpose is flipping the Iowa House and getting Bobby Woo! Right. So, so, what that purpose means for me, and what I'm hoping that you guys can help me with as well. So my purpose is to use my voice to amplify yours. My voice is not any more important than any of yours. My issues are not any more important than any of yours. So I need your stories and your passions. I need you to tell me what things are important so that we can keep, keep them going up the line instead of just being told what to do from up on top. Because we're the Iowans, we know how to fix Iowa. Um, I wanna empower you to find your own purpose. If I have you know, brought anyone new into the process, even if I don't win next November, those people are still gonna be here and we're going to keep working and we're going to keep making change. So, um, you know, at this point we've already won at all of the new faces. I mean, who would have ever thought we'd have this many people in one room 
listening to a candidate that doesn't live in your district. <laughs> 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 um, I want to lead by example with kindness and generosity. I know I get some pushback sometimes telling me I'm going to have to go negative, but I don't even want to talk about him. I just want to talk about what we're going to do differently. And, uh, and we need to start building some visions as to what we're gonna do together. And there's a lot of problems in this state that we can fix, and we don't, we don't need other people telling us how to do it. We just need to listen to each other. So um, I'd like to heal the rifts, speaking of listening to each other. Um, there are so many of us that have neighbors that we won't speak to, and I mean, even within the same party, we have things that we can't talk about. And I would just like to encourage everybody to just start trying. Just, just start little conversations with people. Try to lay your bias aside and just listen and then offer your perspective and see if you can find some common ground. I've been uh, doing this since, well, probably over a year now. And I have had some of the most amazing